and welcome to the latest installment of our One SJI Diversity podcast series. Today's conversation is in honor of Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month. We are joined by South Jersey Gases' Jocelyn Rosa and Carolina Mendoza, as well as special guest Joven Fernandez from Rutgers University Camden. Let's go to the conversation now. So my name is Jocelyn Rosa, and I am a um, senior quality analyst at South Jersey Gas Customer Contact Center. And I was born in Atlantic City, uh, but I was not raised in Atlantic City. I was actually not raised mostly in the United States at all. I was raised in Puerto Rico. My family is all from there. I was raised there until I was about 12 or 13, and then we migrated to the United States and kind of hopped around to different states. Eventually, I came to settle back in New Jersey. I think I've been a Jerseyan by heart since birth. <laughs> it just feels like home. And um, if you can share something about your cultural background that is unique, Joven. My name is Joven Fernandez. I actually work for Rutgers University Camden for a program called the Rutgers Future Scholars. It's a college access program. And something that's unique about my cultural background is that I refer to myself as a hungry Colombian or a Colombarian. And that is because I am, just as it sounds, Colombian and Hungarian. You know, growing up, this felt really conflicting at times. Um, I often felt like I was living in two completely different worlds uh, just because both were so different. And as you all can imagine, if you are from a blended family, you know, you spend one weekend with mom's side of the family, one weekend with dad's side of the family, and you just experience different things. And You know, when you're young, it's kind of hard to take that all in and really understand it. But as I got older, I realized that although these may be two different worlds, they do intersect. And it can give me an advantage to see things from multiple perspectives. So because of that, it has actually helped me to just serve as an advocate, help me to spread more education and awareness and really help people uh, navigate their identities and find a sense of belonging when they feel torn and not really sure which side to identify with or which side is more dominant. So just being more comfortable in their own skin. So that has been my experience and something that's unique to my cultural background. My name is Carolina Mendoza, and I I have been uh, with South Jersey Gas for the last 10 years. I am originally from Colombia, 100% Colombian. Uh, well, now Colombian-American, I guess, because I am raising a family here, and my kids are, gonna, are first generation American. Um, my first home in the States was in Memphis, Tennessee. And then my now my husband was in Philadelphia. So when, when we got married, I moved throughout the journey of being where I am now and, and starting brand new life um, on a second language and, and professionally wasn't easy. It requires a lot of discipline, a lot of, um, dedication and I feel like my background helped me a lot to adjust to changes and and to f- make this my home now because now I have been here for 20 years and I feel that this is home for me and I see and get glad when I meet other Latinas that have been able to succeed and to make a difference in the community or society where that they are part of. Kind of to add on to what you were just saying about our first generations and second generations, my children are first generation born in the United States, but my generation was first generation raised in the United States. And I think um, we can see the difference in what we see. Um, my children are brought up more Americanized. I feel like they understand the culture better as to where myself and my brother and sisters my cousins, we didn't quite understand the culture. So we struggled quite a bit to try to fit in and to figure out where our place was in in this country. And it was uh, it was very interesting growing up, trying to figure out where where we belonged and, and how to make it. That's right. Jocelyn and Joby, now that you are mentioning how challenging it was trying to find your own identity when you are growing up, what do you think that... um 
representation meant to you then or, or means to you now? Representation is so important, especially as I mentioned, if you, you know, are, are experiencing two different, what feels like two different worlds. I was fortunate enough to have a few key people who came into my life and really changed the trajectory of my future. Um, neither one of my parents really enforced education. Both were very adamant about go get a job and help contribute towards the bills. My peers, especially in high school, were talking about college. I'm like, I'm not going to college. One, I didn't feel like I was smart enough. Two, it was never, there was no pressure applied for me. The joke in the house was when I would bring home an F, F stood for Fernandez. But it wasn't until I got involved with the Boys and Girls Club from my hometown, which is Trenton, New Jersey. And when they asked me, what are your plans? You know, you're about to graduate soon. And I'm like, I'm going to work at the post office. I'm going to make, you know, some great money there. They, the mentors and staff at the Boys and Girls Club said, absolutely not. You're capable of so much more. And I couldn't fathom what they were saying. I did not see myself through the lens that they saw me from. And from that point, um, they literally drove me to Bloomfield College, which is where I ended up going for my bachelor's degree. And it was that point, Bloomfield College uh, is a minority-based institution. So there were a lot of black, black and brown students around me and I felt comfortable. I felt like, yes, I'm around, you know, people who we can have these conversations about race and the struggles. And, you know, I, I did not feel discriminated against or ostracized, whereas that felt different when I went on to pursue my master's at a different institution. What about you, Jocelyn? What has been your experience with representation? I, I grew up in, in Puerto Rico, as I data before, it, it was very different then. Everyone looked like me, everyone sounded like me, everyone spoke the same language. However, when we migrated to the United States, uh, I went to schools, there was really nobody that I could relate to, nobody that spoke the same language. So that was very, very difficult for me, having to go to school with kids that I couldn't relate to or even talk to and teachers that couldn't even understand me. So that was that was very difficult. I grew up in a household where education was, was very important. Uh, my parents both had college degrees, but when we came to the United States, it almost didn't matter. They didn't speak the language, so they had to take jobs that were not in their field because of their lack of English. It was it was kind of very discouraging to see that my parents, who were educated, were not able to, to hold any type of rank that would suit what they had gone to school for. So at first, you know, it almost, education almost didn't matter. My parents still encouraged it, but um, I think they were very, very much relaxed on it because they understood that myself and my uh, my siblings, we didn't speak the language. So they knew that we were going to struggle. Um, it wasn't until I was in about ninth grade, we came to live to, in New Jersey and um, and I found, I found my people here. <laughs> I found um, a lot of children of color and teachers of color that I could relate to. By then, I, I was more proficient in, in the English language, but just the fact that I was able to see um, other kids and teachers that look like me, that mattered. It, it mattered a lot because um, I didn't feel out of place. I felt like I belonged. Um, I felt like I could relate to people, people that knew what kind of experiences I've had. You know, going into into the, the workforce uh, once I was of age, it just, it mattered even more because seeing the people that were in the supervisors and manager chairs and, you know, in, in leadership roles, it almost didn't feel like I fit in at first. And I think it just, it, it was the culture in the different places that I would work at. There, there wasn't that inclusiveness as far as people of color really making it any higher than, than the lower level positions. Um, once I came to South Jersey Gas, I, it was, it was a huge difference. There was such a diversity um, of people that, that were in leadership roles. And I, I wanted to make it my goal to get to that place, but I doubted myself. I had two supervisors here, actually, who are not of color, who actually helped me to see my potential. They they saw more in me than I saw in myself. They they were very encouraging. They um, they helped me to see that I had more to give than what I figured I had. Um, I, I was like I said, I, was, I just doubted myself that I could even uh, hold any leadership position. I wanted to. I wanted to try. But it wasn't so much the language barrier. Um, it was also like the um, the fact that I can speak the language, but there's times when I stutter. I, I There's times when I don't pronounce a word correctly. It's a little embarrassing. The fact that I have peers 
that that are not of color that are very supportive of the fact that hey you, I I can understand you you're speaking fine everything's okay you got this they're very encouraging um, that helps a lot um, it's it's something that I think it's necessary everywhere uh, we need to make sure that we're encouraging each other just because you don't look like me it doesn't mean that you can't encourage me it's definitely I gotta say was definitely the most pivotal moment. Uh, for me, that people that didn't look like me were lifting me up and were actually uh, helping me see my true potential. That's awesome that um, the supportive system is definitely very important. For me, it was a little bit similar, but different at the same time, because the two of you kind of grew up or came here very early. You were still in high school. I came here after I got my undergrad degree so I was already like 20 year old and back then when I really had the opportunity to get a, a, an experience in the second language like living and you know was because right there in Colombia I took English classes throughout my high school and and during college but it was really when I came when I started you know, taking the the English lessons more seriously and practicing with other people, and and it wasn't easy. It was it was a, a very, as I mentioned at the beginning, required a lot of uh, discipline. But I have to say, I also found a very supportive environment and surrounded myself with very kind people when I found the opportunity to work with this um, organization, with South Jersey Gas. Um, I will be always grateful for the opportunity. And, and I feel that we are part of an organization that takes seriously um, having the representation at all levels. Just by definition, representation means the actions of speaking or acting on behalf of some someone and i feel like it is something it is something very important not only at, at your job environment just like you say it jocelyn as a as a culture as a society as a community if you feel the comfort of being represented or having peers or people that speak your language or share your traditions or have a similar thought process um, I think that it makes everyone feel better. And it, it is something that as a society and as, and as parents, we should work and continue to work um, to make sure that diversity and respect and inclusion is part of our, of our DNA.